with the Board of Trustees for the Village of Cambr uh, Cambridge, Tuesday, September 13th, to order, please. Roll call. Trustee Breinig, Franklin, Whitworth. Here. Hollenbeck, Derek Cumbier. Here. Schaefer White. Oh, she's done, sorry. Uh, McNally. Here. All right, so we have four of us, and uh, that's enough for a quorum tonight. Um, maybe that'll change here. Uh, you know, we'll get everybody back and find somebody for our, yeah. um, mm -hmm. to join our ranks. Uh, let's stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance and to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Lisa, can you tell us if this meeting has been properly posted? The agenda was posted in the upper and lower levels of the Amundsen Community Center, Cambridge Post Office, Hometown Bank, Badger Bank, and the Village website. Okay, I think we're good to go. Um, I want to start off. Um, I've asked Terry Johnson, who is the chief of the Cambridge mm -hmm. area fire department, uh, to come up and give us an update on how the fire department is doing this year. Welcome, Terry. If you could introduce yourself. I'm Terry Johnson, chief at Cambridge Fire. Um, I guess uh, start out. Uh, we had 185 uh, incidents or calls last year. Uh, this year we're on pace for about 210. So it's up a little bit. Uh, we have 31 current members. Um, we did last night, uh, had one of our assistant chiefs uh, take a job with Madison Fire. So he's leaving our department. Uh, he will be quite missed. Uh, we did lose another member. Uh, she completed her nursing staff, nursing education and she's taken a job at the UW. Um, what else would you like to know, Mark? Um, how are you doing on uh, with your your equipment? I know you've given us the budget. Uh, yeah, we, we do have, we just got uh, the squad um, late last year, so that arrived. Uh, we do have engine 17 now is uh, the 2003, it's uh, 19 years old. Um, we're looking into the chassis and they put together that at this point. Um, it would be a two year build on it mm -hmm. uh, from this time. Uh, I've, I've talked to the commission about that um, to uh, get that updated. That's the truck that goes out to the most calls. It's got the most miles, most rust and things. It's uh, one of our most dependable trucks at this point, but we have to keep them dependable when they get to be 20 years old. Okay. And um, how are you doing with volunteers? Uh, and, and the reason I ask that is because we've had a couple of referendums and they have, they didn't pass. Well, they did, but not totally. And so... Uh, it, well, we're, we're maintaining about 30, usually it's between 31, 30, 31, 32. Uh, currently we're at 31. So... Uh, but we do have several new members that are in school right now um, getting completed so they can give us their their full full benefit of what they can give us at this point. They have to go through a couple different classes before they can respond to calls. Mm -hmm. So that's that's happening at this point. Um, okay. And uh, anything else that you can think of? That well, the, you know, the referendums past everybody except Oakland at this point uh, the um, but the problems have not gone away uh, we still have the issues and the problems that we have for the reason for the referendum um, so that's a big issue uh, there's the issues in there with um, space staff or uh, safety long-term health care uh, we just found out that the actual fire gear that we we wear does have PFAS in it, so um, they give us some direction as to what to do with that to try to minimize the exposure with that. Um, 
So. Okay. Uh, Questions from? Uh, yeah, I do. I have one. I know the air handling system is old on that that building. Is there any talk about upgrading that air handler? Well, we're putting in the um, the commission has Oak Clay to put in the the Plymo vent system. It's the system that hooks up to each truck. Okay. And then when you drive the truck out, it disconnects automatically, and so that as, as the trucks are running in the building, they'll be ventilated. That'll out help. Of, out of the a little bit anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the big issues with the building is the the ventilation system. You start the diesel truck in the fire apparatus bay, and the whole building gets full of diesel fumes. So it's it, it's a big problem. Okay. A lot of long-term health care. Detriments mm -hmm. from what from our building. All right. I have a, I have a question. Yep. Um, since you know the truck is going to need to be replaced, the one piece of equipment, have we started applying for grants or doing fundraising? Um, has the uh, the fire department set aside money for that, or or what's going to happen there? Well, that's up to the commission to pay for the, the truck. That's, that's their, our job is to respond to calls, prepare the equipment, and go through training. It's up to the commission to, uh, we're volunteers. We don't have time to, to spend a whole bunch of time writing us. We do have a few grants. We've had grants for um, different gear, Wyland gear, our gear, that type of thing. Um, but that's something we'd have to talk to the commission about. They, so, Mark, they, is there someone on the commission that is, like, putting some attention towards that? Since we know this is going to be coming up and uh, so that, you know, the commission can maybe get ahead of it a little bit? Well, I can tell you that the focus right at the present time, and I'll talk a little bit about it later, is the budget for this, this upcoming year. And then it, after that, I'm sure I can work with Mark Terry to see what yeah we, what we, we, we can met do. with um, um, Senator Baldwin's representative about the building um, trying to get some grants for the building Mark Cook and I met with uh, a gentleman there and uh, so that that's kind of in the works but it didn't look real promising the all the grants for in that particular program were um, already designated for next April and there was nothing in the federal budget at that point to to continue the program sure. at this point so I know the EMS and this is EMS now but um, Paul had done some work in that area and we, were, we found out that we were not successful so they had been submitted so we are trying we are trying yeah we will help the Commission in any way we can with these types of things but it's our, our job is to respond to the calls and I appreciate that you actually in 2007 responded to a call at my house. So, um, and, and I appreciate um, everything that you guys did. So. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Any other questions? <laughs> hmm? Barry, thank you very much. Appreciate Barry, you coming you. by. Yep. All right. Danny, any questions, just please contact me at any time. If you like a tour of the facility, let me know. All right. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Okay, we're going to now move into the um, public comment. Is there anybody here that would like to speak? Hi. How many would like to talk to this evening? One, two, three. Show of hands if you want to talk. Okay, um, uh, two and a half minutes. Um, we can do this. And they did hand out to you um, from Carol Sapienza um, the update for tourism. I didn't um, have it in time to put on the agenda, but I. Okay. Hand right. it out to you. Yeah, I just wanted to say a quick hello. Can you introduce yes. yourself, please? Hi, I'm Carol Sapiens. I'm a Cambridge resident and the board secretary of the Jefferson County Tourism Council. Um, just giving a quick update. Normally, I do it every six months to every quarter, something like that. Um, you um, are uh, a community partner with um, the Jefferson County Tourism Council. We have a uh, half a spread in the guide this year and we're starting to think about and work on next year's guide um, 30,000 were printed um, distributed all over um, 
uh, let's see, what can I tell you? We um, Discover Wisconsin with the county got into a three-year contract with Discover Wisconsin, and the episode, the TV episode, was just this last weekend. It was um, very nice, not as much Cambridge information as I'd like to have out there, but I did see Nick from Dancing Goat kind of dancing in the beginning, and then um, Jefferson Speedway was also kind of highlighted at the end, so that was pretty awesome. And then in April, they did do a digital short, um, which highlighted the arts in Cambridge. Mark Skidlarik was in it, Cambridge Woodfire Pottery, and they talked about the history of row pottery, which was pretty amazing. Also, there's a logo here that, um, Cambridge is considered a 2022 choice destination, so you can use that logo on any promotional materials that you like on the website. It just kind of makes us look cool, you know. So, um, new for the website, we've got a new barn quilt tour um, that just got launched last week, um, and I would love to get more Cambridge barn quilts up. So once that um, is officially up, which um, will be this Saturday. I will promote it um, locally to see if we can get some more Cambridge um, addresses on it. Um, our website's about 125,000 page views for the year so far. Um, what else? There's lots of links on my update. Everything here is in writing. Um, thank you for your Destination Madison partnership. I know that um, Kathy from Cambridge um, Market did attend the last collaboration meeting. Maybe somebody else did too, but then she comes, brings back information to um, the Wednesday wake up meetings and then shares that with um, our other, other businesses in town, which is great. Um, Travel Wisconsin, I also post um, our events on the Travel Wisconsin site. And I have a list of the events. And I don't know, my time is probably up, but I forgot to put the Halloween costume parade, which is being taken mm -hmm. over by Pleasant Time this year. Um, so that should be really cute this year on October 28th. Um, there's a schedule of the Discover Wisconsin shoot schedule and stuff like that at the end. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Lisa knows how to get a hold of me, and it's probably on here on this little update. So, Carol, yes. what, what is Small Business Saturday for November 26th? That's, um, it's like an American Express kind of a holiday where um, it's every year black they friday. just kind of have sales it's the and saturday it's the saturday after, after black thanksgiving. friday thanksgiving yeah right to promote local shopping right okay. Okay. so they have black shops. friday and then they have small business saturday for like small uh businesses you know like downtown main streets okay yeah it's fun you should check it out this time i, mm -hmm. I learned something here every night <laughs> okay thank you for all you do carol yes this is thank great you very and thank much. you for the update my pleasure um, uh, Lisa, can we get this electronically so that I, the, yeah. I can get the link? Yeah, because I could type all that stuff in. But yes, I, just <laughs> yeah. it. I can <laughs> forward it to you. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Carol, thank you very much. You. Okay, if you can come up and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Andrea Masati. Um, I'm a resident of the Vineyards. I'm also the vice president of the newly turned over HOA for the Vineyards. So um, just a couple things. Um, haven't been here for a couple months, and now that we've got the HOA turned over to us, we just wanted to see if there's any status or updates on a few things that were previous. So one of the things that I was looking for status on was, was there ever a resolution on the draining issues in the Vineyards? So that was one thing. Um, was there, is there any status or anything going on with having Vulcan remove their garbage still from the subdivision, which in turn will allow Todd to cut the grass that needs to be cut, but they can't do it because their trash is still everywhere. And when I say trash, I'm not talking about water bottles. We're talking about concrete blocks and pallets, and Todd's seen it. Um, so I don't know if anything's been done with that or if the city plans yeah, we, on doing we anything. We contacted uh, Vulcan and uh, they're uh, working on to find out who owns that equipment. It's one of their general contractors. Well, it's also garbage too. It's like the, the black stuff that they put on when they're doing the landscaping. I mean, it's just garbage and it's all over. Okay. Um, and if the village isn't going to do anything, then the HOA has, to, has talked about it and we will try and get something done. But we thought, I know there was at some point, because it does interact with the grass cutting issue, because where the, a lot of that is, the weeds are yeah. this high. Yeah. 
Um, the other thing that you're here, Todd and I actually talked about all of the broken sidewalks that Vulcan created when they built the homes. And I don't know if the village was going to do anything about fixing those or doing anything about them because 90% of those homes have broken sidewalks in front of them. Um, I'm here also about the name change, which I know is going to happen tonight. I live on Vineyard Crossing, so I will be affected by this name change. Um, the one thing we're asking is, how is it going to be facilitated? There's only not, there's, I think there's like 10 houses that are going to be affected between the, the cul-de-sac and Vineyard Crossing. How is it going to be facilitated about how long is something like this going to take? And um, can we request that it not happen until after the holiday? Just because with Christmas coming, ordering, having things sent to you, we just don't know how this process is even going to work. Um, so that was one thing. And then the lastly, uh, I had put into the agenda, which I didn't find out until this morning, goes actually in front of the public works agenda. But it's for the some type of a street sign for no stopping standing parking by where the apartments are. The apartments are part of the HOA. They're part of our covenants. And um, their tenants are parking in the streets on either both sides or one side. And when you're making a left-hand turn, I'm sorry, a right-hand turn um, to go east on Vineyard Drive, you cannot see anything. The cars are parked in the street. It's obstructed. There are people in the street because there is no sidewalk in front of the park either. So that when people are coming off the bike path, they have to be in the street because there's no sidewalk. Um, I didn't know until this morning, Christy let me know that this issue actually is going to be with the Department of Public Works meeting. But just to kind of give you an idea or an update that this is something that we really need to discuss. And I don't know if the children at play sign goes with them as well. We were talking about maybe being able to put a children at play sign somewhere like right when you first get into the neighborhood. Because since I've been there in the last year and a half, I believe 50 children have moved in. And that's not an underestimate. So I'm assuming then that to, would that issue then go with the um, public works as well? Okay. Thank you. Um, Any questions? Do, you, do we have all this? We're going to be taking mm -hmm. up some of it later on tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. The name change, I know you were. It was just mm -hmm. trying to get back to the people that are going to be affected as to how that's going to be facilitated and how long something like that's going to take. And Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Andrea. Thank you. All righty. One more individual. For the New Winston Club 716 Kensett Way, um, to reiterate what Andrew just said, the sidewalk on the one side of the park um, addressing, um, as we've addressed before, what is the status of the park that's coming in that was supposed to come in and who is sponsoring that. Um, also, the, um, the, the speed limit signs we gave you, I think like four or five meetings ago, we gave you the speed limit signs. We got to get speed limit signs up there. These kids, they, these people run through there or drive through there really fast. And we discussed this probably a month ago, six weeks ago. We gave you, I gave you handouts of what the speed limit signs were supposed to be by in conjunction with the park. Um, but we need to get something up there because there's people that fly through there. Um, are, is there any um, intention of putting any more street lights up in the vineyards or who is responsible for that? Um, like at, on the path by seven o'clock, our neighborhood's pretty well dark and Todd, you know that. I mean, we've got the, the only like three major corner lights and that's all we have. So none of the path, the walking paths are lighted, nothing. So, and it's, it's dangerous no matter how you go. And there's coyotes and fox that run through there all the time. Um, and if you're walking a dog, I really don't want to come in junction with that one of those. Um, the other thing is um, <clears throat> the, the three lights that we do have, um, are you, is Cambridge doing decorating those light fixtures like they do downtown? Or are we responsible for that? Or who, who does all that stuff? Um, um, Christmas decorations, lights in the park, um, more street lights, speed limit signs, park, and the sidewalk. Anything else? Yep. Uh, to go along with what Andrea said about some of the trash and stuff, those black 
uh, those black, well, I don't know what you call yeah, them. We just, we just talked to there's, some. There's some that are actually down into the storm sewers. Mm -hmm. They're yes. plugging up the storm sewers so water doesn't, can't get down into it, creating a flood factor. So maybe if they can be looked at in our, in our area, it'd be great. Okay. We can probably pick them up. Just I think so it's, you know. time, it's time to pick them up. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah. And the good thing, um, kudos to the, to the you guys, Todd. Um, the the additional poopy pickup stations is seem to have helped the uh, the vineyards. Some people don't have dogs. Some people people who do have dogs. It's nice that with, there's additional poop stations. Um, so that is a bonus to the neighborhood. So I thank you for that. So you know anybody that owns a, that has a dog should be caring. Well, they should be, but well, they, they don't. should. There, but there's people that do not. We we live on well, the corner, uh, and every day we pick up two, three, four piles of poop. That's not even our dog. I live on Main Street. It's a, it's a daily thing. I mean, it's I everywhere. It's a disrespectful it, thing. Right. You own a dog, you should take care of it. But that's you should be a know. proper pet owner. Right. Period. If it's any consolation, I was driving by today and I saw a person with a good-sized dog, and she's just looking at the dog. And it, it, she was away, and it didn't look like she was planning on going over and no. picking up anything. I had Great Danes, and believe me, we called them landmines because they were literally <laughs> landmines when they went to pick them up. <laughs> and if it's in somebody's yard, uh-uh, that's uh, disrespectful. Thank you for coming thank in you. today, Brenda and Tim. The only thing I can probably say is that it's doubtful that we're doing anything with decorative lights out there. I think we no. only do it downtown. Yeah. Okay, but, and that's yeah. fine. I mean, it, just so we know, so yeah. if the community wants to do it, yeah. but just more lighting would be nice because there is not a lot of lighting in there. Okay. I know that you guys had planted lighting fixtures or electrical. I, I don't mm -hmm. do I, I don't, well, somebody did. They, they the were placed, the electrical spots were put in. Yeah. The developer was responsible for lighting. Okay. The what? The developer. The developer. So that would lights. be Bill Ringett. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So can that be brought up to Bill when he comes in for his? Well, no, it's turned no. over to us. No. Well, no, no, but no, he was still, no, he was still in commission then. He's got to be responsible for what he had. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look into it. Right. Okay. We'll look into it. All right. Thank you right. for Thank coming. You. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to uh, to speak at this uh, open uh, public comment here? Okay. Going to close the public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see you. Um, Kathy Franz, 605 Kenseth Way. I'm also part of the HOA for the vineyard. Um, regarding lighting that Brenda just brought up, according to our covenant, everyone is supposed to have a lamp post in front of their yard that was solar. I've counted nine lamp posts in the area. Um, so it's actually that community, if they want more light in that community, they need, we're going to, as the HOA, going to address the, one of the companies that makes those lampposts to see if we can get a bundle deal and maybe a reduced cost. But according to the covenant, they, every person should have a lamppost in their front yard that goes by solar, that goes on in the, at, like, at dusk and goes off at dawn. Um, we have one, it works perfectly fine. In fact, I live in the court and if we don't keep our lights on on our uh, the outside of our house there is it's completely pitch black in the court so i think these lamp posts would really help for safety features um i know that's nothing that the that the village board has to do with and it's something the hoa has is going to address okay all right thank you talking about the along the pathway yeah oh, I, agree. Purposes. I agree the pathway does need to be lit especially because i must I'm a six o'clock a.m. walker, right. and it's going to get dark now soon. Okay, thank you for coming thank in you. and sharing here tonight. All right. Or can I just, I can, just real quick, can I just clarify what Brenda had said about the planters in the vineyards? Because uh, those originally were done by the property manager at the apartments. Bill had him putting them in. They were there for the first year. They all died. So this past year, homeowners who live on those corners have put them in. They've never really been the responsibility of the city. So that's something else that the HOA is talking about, is having mm -hmm. homeowners being responsible for the ones that are closest to their house if they want to put something in. So I just wanted to clarify that um, to let you guys know when Brenda asked about that, because that's nothing that the city's ever, or the village has ever done. Okay. okay. All right. I didn't know that. Oh, right. and that's why, that's why I wanted to clarify. 
Okay. All right. I'm going to close this portion of the, uh, the meeting here for public comment. Uh, move on. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. No second. Okay. Any discussion necessary? No. Okay. No. Nothing? Good. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All righty. Uh, let's keep going. Um, President's report. Um, really, uh, I don't have anything that I, I, I wanted to share other than we had a lot of water here. Um, and uh, our um, Koshkanon Creek is, is full of this stuff. Um, it, uh, it's, <laughs> and, and, and the park is. Okay. And um, I see that the Koshkanon is actually overflowing its banks. Um, but, you know, that's how it goes. It'll drain <coughs> down. And, um, you know, we'll unless we get more rain. Unless we get Not until Friday and Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Not <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. Uh, not a lot on Saturday. I love it. All right. Um, it's not something that, uh, yeah, that, that we have a whole lot of control over. And, um, you know, that's just how it is. So that's my, uh, my president's report message. All right. Yeah, it's going to be you next. Okay, Todd, why don't you come up? Sure. You can identify yourself, sir. I am Todd Lord, uh, Director of Public Works. Um, you missed the water yesterday morning, or Monday, or whenever it happened. I think it was Monday morning. Mm -hmm. It was the, the ice skating rink and the river were one. Mm -hmm. you, there was no grass to be seen, yeah. and it was actually up on the banks. Um, they're working on Johnson Street. They, they milled it down today and they, they started setting grade. Um, today's the 13th, right? Yeah. <laughs> the 15th, they're, uh, I believe the 15th, they're shutting down the sewer system. So just be aware of that, everybody, please. <laughs> I think it's for a few hours. Uh, uh, Lawn Street and England Street will be paved, will be paved on the 15th. And that, that'll finally get done. <laughs> um, I'm pretty much on my own right now. So I am your public worker. <laughs> <laughs> on Lawn Street, I saw the emails. It, it sounds like you've advised people not to park there yes. so that the trucks can get in and get it all and done. And if they feel that they need to park out, they can park, I told them to park away from it. Okay. Did did we notify Johnson Street that they for about the okay? Because yes. someone posted mm -hmm. on Facebook that they weren't notified, so they just must have missed it in their mail. Johnson Street got letters, Townsend Street got letters, and even Sullivan got letters to tell them that they're going to have inc increased traffic due to the other two closures. Okay. There, there's plenty of signage to. Okay. to and then what about that. the sewer outage? Have we notified the people who will be affected by the sewer outage? There's, there should be no effect. It's, it's a couple hour thing. They have to replace a, a part in the, in the sewer system. But I can still flush my toilet if oh, I Oh yeah, you can. But just, just be, just be aware of every time you flush in your toilet. But anyway, what they do is they come around, they empty all the lift stations, okay. and then they lock them. They, they shut them off and lock them. Okay. Because when, once they're in there and working, they do not want any rush of water coming at them. Sure. So. They're, they're replacing something to do with a separator or something something like that. And uh, they, need, they need to drain that system and, and, uh, and repla repair that part and get out of there. So they, they figure it to be in like an hour and a half to- So what happens- at the, at the most, three hours. What happens if I'm running my dishwasher take and taking a shower during that time? I, it's not gonna be a major thing. It's just, just be conscious. That, that on that day that there's guys in a there's guys down down in those holes working. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> okay. I got a question. Yeah. Or actually okay. in the in the in the uh, sewer in the sewer district. All right. Uh, Todd, there's a couple of repairs that have to be done on Johnson Street before they pave, and that's the depressed curb for the curb that's yep yep dropped and down, and then also the mm -hmm. curb in front of that. Uh, that fire hydrant that's really too close to the road yes, also. Yes, and the people that are doing the, the uh, Baby? the no, the the sewer work down on the, or the drain work down on that Townsend, yep. Townsend and Johnson there, uh, we're talking to them to have them 
go ahead and do that. It's like a six foot section and right. there's one curb that's yep. dove down like that and they'll just charge extra. For, for what they're gonna be doing, it's a minimum charge of five yards for concrete and they're not gonna be using five yards of concrete in one little spot. So no. No, they'll probably right. be more than happy to Use add that to what they're stuff. doing. Sure, that's fine. Uh, um, go ahead. Oh, I, I was moving on to That's another topic. That's what I'm going to say, anyway. Yeah, I was going to move on to a different topic, too, with Todd, but go yep. ahead. Me, me too, with Todd. Right. Okay. Um, uh, Christy Ann on the garland. The garland. You, Already ordered it. You ordered it? Yep. Okay, you talked to her. Perfect. It's at, all taken care of. Uh, excellent. <laughs> and then. And Matter then, of fact, I just did that today. Perfect. Because we met. <laughs> it took me met, a couple of times to count the yep. street lights. <laughs> the Economic Development uh, Committee met last night, and so that was one of the things that came out of that. And then um, the, chain, uh, the um, Cambridge Christmas is the weekend of, of December 2nd and 3rd. So the, the uh, businesses downtown are asking to make sure that the garland is up on the posts prior to that weekend. She will, she's told me that she would have, she would, she would have it uh, sometime right after Thanksgiving. Okay, so, so then that week after right Thanksgiving, you'll be able to, okay. yeah. and if, if you need assess, assistance, I'll volunteer my husband to help you do that. <laughs> you oh, nice. volunteer your husband an awful lot, yeah, don't yeah. you? <laughs> We'll get him up in that machine. <laughs> no, we will not. <laughs> <laughs> Please no. Insurance purposes, we will not we'll make sure be doing she always that. operated. <laughs> there we are. Um, okay, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, Todd, I noticed that around town we do have some raised sidewalks, and they're they're painted, you know, some color. Is there any plan on on grinding those down? I need I need to get to the GSI thing, and I haven't had time to work with Scott yet on that, and because I need to go through every neighborhood. And, and identify all, all sidewalks and even in the vineyard. Everywhere everywhere has to be identified and what needs to be replaced. And, and, and they have to be spotted out on the GIS. It will, it'll, once I do that, it will you know, it'll show the measurement of how much needs to be replaced and, and, uh, and the bad spots in the sidewalks, you know, where the bad spots are and who's, re I don't know and who's responsible. We do you. not do the sidewalks throughout town. That would be letters going out to residents once we work through it with the engineers and the GIS system. And we let people know they can fix them themselves or we assess if we fix them. Um, so it's a whole process yeah, we go through. It's the homeowner's responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. Unless it's on village property. Right. All right. And so then we're, we're in the process of doing that. We have to. Well, as, soon as, as soon as I catch up. Okay. Now that kind of gets <laughs> us into the next, my next question. You said you're the only public works employee? Yeah. Derek had out, uh, operation today. Okay. For tendonitis. So oh, okay. he's out unknown. So it's just you. Mm -hmm. and, and Lee part-time. And, part and Lee. Part -time. Lee works part-time. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Boy, boy, am I glad he was still there when that, when that 300 number came up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And you're, you're working and we'll get the, mm -hmm. the review uh, from personnel. Yep. 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 Okay. That's later on in the meeting. Yep. Okay. All righty. Well, keep up the good work. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Todd. Yep. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> um, if you if you need my I'm just saying that because I threw that thing on for you. <laughs> you help said, me. If you need my number, um, um, Lisa has or Dean's number. Okay. I think Lisa yes. probably has Dean's number right. as well. Thank so, you. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, economic development. Um, we met last night. Um, we had applied for a grant through the UW, and we did not get that grant. Um, we're looking at applying for a small grant from AARP. Um, we're submitting the grant to, to get two benches to go out in um, L, at the LBK Park so that we can put two benches out in that area and at least have something out there. Um, so we're, we've, we're looking to apply for that grant. And then um, uh, they, we asked about, and I talked to Todd about the garland to support the Cambridge Christmas. And then the other thing is I asked Chrissy to take a look at to see if there's any budget in the economic development um, budget at all, if there's any dollars there 
Uh, one of the things that's been missing from the country Christmas the last couple years has been the um, hay rides and the wagon and the hay rides. Um, so we're looking to see if there's any money that maybe the village could help and uh, pay for that, but we don't know if we, we have any money in our budget for that. So that's, that's what we're looking into at this point in time. Okay. Right. Questions for Paula? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Eric, Plan Commission. Most of what we discussed will be later in the agenda. The one thing that was not discussed, or that was discussed that's not on this for later, is um, potential development um, at the entrance to the vineyards. There, there's someone's interested in developing that first. So across the street from the winery, in between the, the winery and the clinic and all that stuff, so there's some interest in developing that. Um, it was just, there was no action item, it was just uh, That engaged. will be a public hearing at yeah. our next meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, village office updates. Lisa? Um, the August election and the recount has all been finalized, all the state paperwork and so forth, beginning on November elections. Ballots will actually be delivered next week. Number of different personnel items. Um, developers agreement was finalized for Scott Farms where on this agenda is the developers agreement for TID 6. Um, number of things going with well 2, well 3, working with um, public works on those. Chrissy finalized some state and local recovery fund compliance documents that are required and working on the addressing issues. Um, floor replacement in the old office will be coming up later this month. Working on the bike path, we did have a pre-construction meeting last week for Scott Farms. So that will be beginning shortly. Um, lots of stuff going on. Anything on the upcoming election? Anything unusual? You guys are all set for that. Ballots are coming next week. We have some training next week. Equipment goes in for maintenance. We have that um, safety thing, though. Hmm? We thought that Dane County safety. Dane County is working on this last election. They had safety, an ongoing Zoom call all day so if there were any issues at elections um, we could go on the zoom call immediately so they were testing that out to have in place for November um, so a lot of stuff going on on the back end to ensure what's the policy on absentee ballots is there any changes in that um, Nope, same as it's been. People have to request them in writing. They can do it on my vote, or we have forms to fill out. Emails can come to me. Once we get ballots, they'll be mailed out. They do need to be returned by mail, in person, by the person. Other people cannot bring in. Um, they are making some exception, exceptions for disabled. Um, there will be some new guidelines if somebody is disabled. They can fill out paperwork authorizing somebody to bring in their ballots, but it's... But how, if you're sending it back by mail, how, how, how do you ensure then that that's being sent by the person? We, that's not our job. Okay. Um, if we receive it in the mail, we assume it was mailed back by the person. Right. There's no way we can police that. Yeah, I don't think so. No. Okay, so you're you're good to go. The election More is stuff <coughs> going on constantly with it. Yeah. All right. A never-ending job. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one that won't stop. All right. Any other questions for Lisa? All right. Thank you. Let's move on. Chrissy, what can you tell us about bills? There was a lot. Uh, yeah. First run of bills was one hundred six thousand. $219.25, and the second run that was done today is $32,451.19 for a total of one, $138,670.44. Okay. 
I'll make a motion to pay the bills in the amount of $138,670.44. I'll second. Okay. All right. Discussion? No. Just seems I to be. I have no questions this time. I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> Bills are bills. Uh, yeah, it just seems like a lot, but yes. it is what it is. So, well, Deerfield was a big chunk of it. Village yeah. of Deerfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah they had not sent it for yeah. the police. That's for yeah. the shared yeah. Yeah. police exactly. services. Yeah, I yes. know. All right. Okay. Um, we got a motion and a second. There are no uh, concerns, questions. So, roll call, please. Franklin Whitmer. Yes. Colin Beck. Yes. Cumbier. Yes. Brian Egg. McNally. Yes. All right. Bills are going to be paid. Thank you. Uh, let's move on now to uh, some new business and discussion, possible action regarding the uh, Cambridge Resolution 2022-11 related to renaming the streets in the village of Cambridge. Is this Lisa or is this Chrissy? This is Chrissy. This is Chrissy. Um, I've been working with a Dane County Land Information Office, um, a gentleman named Fred. Um, we've been going back and forth. Um, it's been, I have a little, <laughs> me. I have a, not the scale map. <laughs> Put it right in front of you too. And I'll flip it around so you can see it. So, <laughs> I'm sorry for my back. Nope, all good. So basically what I'm suggesting is right now the winery is 700 Kent Seth Way. Last meeting we renamed it, or we renumbered it to 600 Kent Seth Way. If we leave this this way and left this here, there's a conflicting a duplicate address in Kenseth Way. So I proposed to change this from Kenseth Way to court, but then when I talked to the gentleman Fred at Dane County, he suggested we get rid of the duplicate names. So we already have Vineyard Court, we have Vineyard Drive, we have Vineyard Crossing, Kenseth Way, and Winery Way. It's very confusing. So mm -hmm. I suggested to rename, remember this, this will obviously leave these lots here, that one is going to be sold recently, to have an address. So then it goes 600 here, then 700, and then I propose to change Kenseth Way to Chardonnay, Chardonnay Court, and then as well as Vineyard Crossing to Merlot Lane. And all the numbers will stay the same. So can I see the cul-de-sac with Kenseth Way? Right. So, right. Back here. so why? In, instead of renaming the, the road, why don't we make them 800s? <laughs> we can't do that. I, and that's work. Okay. It should have been it done that. for the EMS and, and for the police. Yeah. And that was a yeah. big thing. Wait. Yeah. We had no, we'll just, I, I've got her. Yeah. So okay. basically, if it was, I hate to say, done correctly, it would have. These numbers should have been 600, got it. 700, 800. Got it. But, but since. Hmm. Now it's easier to change the street name than to change the number. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yes. All right. And then if we just change the name completely, Must have missed that mark. it's less, less confusion. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, Ted. I got it. <laughs> Did you need a second? All right. <laughs> Do you see Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Grigio in our future anytime soon? Mm -hmm. uh, Pinot was available. <laughs> but charge, uh, Sauvignon, no. No. Okay. Yeah, no. All right. Uh, do we need a, a resolution and, you know, we got to vote on this? Okay. Do, do, do we grow Merlot and Chardonnay uh, grapes in Wisconsin? Maybe we should have picked Frontenac. I, I, have, I know that's a, I I know that's a northern wine. Crimson Concord. Uh, yeah, good. But then they, yeah. It's all good. And right. I actually reached okay. out to the Homeowners Association out there and they, to get their opinion Chardonnay. as well. Okay. Uh, anybody want to make a motion on this? Sure. All right. That's make a motion to, uh, <laughs> let's see, approve the uh, resolution 2022 related to uh, renaming the streets in the village of Cambridge. All, right. All second. Discussion? Timeline. Uh, basically, place. once this resolution passes, I do have to go get it recorded. So once it gets recorded, then after that, it gets back to Dane County for them to give me permission to submit 
the change into Dane, Cam Dane Access. Mm -hmm. And then I submitted also to the Fort Atkinson Post Office, our post office, and the Milwaukee Post Office. And they actually have a back door, is what they tell me. It's like a back door area that they can go in and change the addresses so it's less taxing on residents. It's, it's, I, I recently did it with, what's the street, Mill Street? No, by the shop, North Street and River? Olson Way. Olson Way, Olson Way. I just recently did that, oh. and it, I, I want to say maybe a month at the most. And so we, we added addresses to that apartment building mm -hmm. that used to be a doctor's office, and it went really, really easily. And when we had to change from North Main to West Main, yeah. That it, it it went really smoothly because yeah. I mean the post office knows, and you know they made concessions for us to make sure we still got our mail and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, in between. And I, every resident will be notified by certified letter of this change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, regarding the timing, somebody had earlier mentioned that you wanted it at the end of the year. I, for, for safety purposes, I, 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 would, I, I wouldn't want to wait. It. I mean, we've already had two calls out there. That's what kind of brought it to my attention. We've had two EMC, or e, uh, emergency calls that they went to the wrong location. And it, 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 I understand, and it would be frustrating because of Christmas packages, but I have talked to residents out there when I go out there with the guys and helping them with reads and stuff, and they've mentioned they all kind of, know each other and if a package from Amazon goes to Miss Masati's house they know it's Mr. Rigel's house so they kind of have that down right now but I would say the sooner the better for safety purposes okay too. all right so we how is that going to affect like the Google Maps and all the things like our Dane County yeah. gets it into their system and Dane County is in charge of all of the okay. Um, like the CAD, which is what the officers use, um, they're in charge. And once that gets into that system, it's in there. Okay. And then there's also a way you can, like, I noticed today when I was looking at a map, they had, what's that place that bar passed? I never remember it. That one? The bar, the one that just sold. Sports page. Sports page. They had sports page in the middle of the street at Quick Trip. And so then I said, suggest an edit, and then they drug it to where it's supposed to be. And so you, you can see that too, if you go in and say, oh, that's not my name, suggest an edit. And then they'll, the more they get edits, the quicker they'll do it. I, I, I was on a map uh, yesterday that still showed North Main Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we haven't had North Main Street for, so I don't even remember how no. long now. <laughs> so. 15 years probably. Yeah, yeah. so okay. it just, it is. It takes time to pick yeah. Um, just answer your question, Eric, regarding the timing. Yep. Okay, Paula. Um, on, on just on the memo, um, uh, the recommended and action requested. Uh, oh, I you do still that. have crimson in there. Oh, sorry. Um, but but it, but at the end of the sentence had it correct. Okay. And okay. and I noticed on the actual resolution it it, it does say showed me. So okay. I didn't know if that made a difference at all for us. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Regarding the renaming of the streets, I'll call the, the matter. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. <coughs> uh, moving on, item B, discussion of possible action regarding appointment of election workers, Jody Lynn Grams and Lawrence Oates. Lisa, anything? Um, could they I volunteered the to work at the when they came through at the last election, so board has to appoint election workers. I'll make a motion to appoint uh, the election workers of Jody Lyon Grams and Lawrence Oates. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Moving on. Item C, discussion and possible action regarding the Cambridge Farm to School Park Reservation, October 7th and 8th at Westside Park. Lisa, anything on this? Mm -hmm. I'll make Great. a motion to approve the uh, park reservation for Cambridge Farm to School October 7th and 8th for Westside Park. I'll second. Okay, We're ready to go. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, 
Discussion and possible action regarding the temporary Class B wine and beer license, Cambridge Farm to School, October 8th at Westside Park. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, regarding the Class B wine and beer license for uh, the Cambridge Farm to School, October 8th at Westside Park. To approve that, Dick? Yep. Okay. All second? All right. And that's just going to be one day instead of two. One day. The okay. second day on the reservation that's is fine. to set up. Okay. The and they will be working with the police um, yep. on set up and so forth. Okay. okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Okay. Moving on. Item E. Discussion and possible action regarding the First Amendment to Declaration of Condominium for the Vineyard Condominiums uh, with Bill Ranglet. Um, and a recommendation from the Plan Commission. Eric or Lisa? Lisa. Um, this is, as you know, in the original plans for the subdivision, those condos, that whole area was set aside for condos. The first phase, they built the first units. This is the second unit, or the second phase of the condos. There will be one additional phase later with a few more buildings. Um, so. There was no objection at Plan Commission to this. It was already in the plan. The one thing to consider for the next round was the uh, right-of-way permit, if mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. right. So how many more big units are going to be built out there? This one had six additional units going in, um, then there will be three more. The next phase would be three more buildings with two units each. And, and all of that's per the original? Per the original plans. plans. And what we had. Mm -hmm. okay. They're yep. going to look the same. And, and I did talk to the engineer thing. today, and um, yep, all the infrastructure was put in for the original condos. And How long before they're completely built out, built out of, of the vineyards? Everything is done. Do we know? Have any idea? I it, I don't know how fast all the condos will go when they'll come in with the next phase. It's getting closer every year. Yeah. yeah. Getting closer every year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I'm going to make a motion to approve the uh, uh, amendment to the declaration of condominium for the Vineyard Condominium. I'll second that. Okay. Any other further questions? Mm -mm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right, moving on, item F, discussion and possible action regarding the first addendum to the Vineyard Condominiums Condominium Flat. And this right. is page number eight of, of that packet. It is the updated plat showing the new, new units and the three future. Um, okay. I'll make a motion to approve the um, uh, first addendum to the Vineyard Condominiums Condominium Flat. I'll second. All right. Um, any questions? Nope. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Please signify by saying aye. Aye. Right. Okay. Aye. Opposed? Carries. Thank you. Okay. Now let's move on to item 10. More interesting. <laughs> it's more interesting, this next item. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Discussion and possible action regarding Blue Jay Way reconstruction. And I think we've got a letter in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. we do. Lisa, what have you got? A letter from Town of Oakland. I, I, I like how he, how he, like, changes history mm -hmm. and, and reconstructed everything to fit his narrative. Mm -hmm. And... And my question is, to Oakland, would be, um, why are they so insistent on tying annexation of the streets with fixing a road? So let's just fix the road, because that's what our constituents need. That's what the citizens of and, and the users around that area need. They need the road fixed. So let's just get the road fixed. And let's forget all the other stuff that's related to it and address that as a separate issue because it is. I thought I should also weigh in on the legal argument that they're making in this letter, which is to say that because the intergovernmental agreement 
talks about the village doing maintenance, of course we intended all of this uh, that's, uh, as part of what is maintenance. And you know, if you look at the statute, chapter 84, that's the DOT statute that talks about this, maintenance to maintain something is definitely different than to construct it or to reconstruct it. I, I think they really mischaracterize what maintain means uh, within the statute. In fact, this was interesting, the only place in that chapter that even defines maintain is to allow it to exist. <laughs> Which is definitely not, I mean, it, it applies to signs, it doesn't apply, it billboards, it doesn't apply to, to roads. But it, 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 I, I really feel like it was a disingenuous characterization of what maintain means and, in the statute. And it was, because I was on the board when this first came up, and we had legal opinions talking about what maintenance means. And that, the decision was that it doesn't mean reconstructing a road. Exactly. So that I, I, that's why I read that letter, and I just, I just don't understand where he's coming from where the town of Oakland is coming from on this. Let's just fix the road. Let's do what we agreed to in the last joint meeting that we had. In the last joint meeting, we agreed that we would each pay half of the road. Let's do that. Both, both entities have agreed to pay. But didn't both entities pass that? Then I don't yeah. understand what the holdup is. And, and winter is coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah. And then we won't get it done this year again. And then and that road will quality. be terrible huh? half after quality. another winter. Yep. Yeah. Can oh, I, I ask right. of our mm -hmm. lawyer, what's the... Um, I have a gravel road then. They make reference to 660707. Um, and they're specifically saying that the town is able to levy on behalf of the village for improvements and such. Um, it's right at the beginning of the letter yeah. in the first or second paragraph there. Our intergovernmental agreement is 660301. So it's in that same chapter. Oh, I think the 660307, I think that is the statute that authorizes the formation of the intergovernmental agreement. I'll, yeah, I'll just check that, but I'm, I'm almost sure that I remember that statute um, from, from the past. And I think that's the context that would that be a Is that where argument? you see it? Let's see, one second. Let yeah, me just check 6, that. 660707. Mm -hmm. Like 0707. In basic training, if you said O for your social security number, when you're in the guest chamber, you'd have to go through again. Oh, that's. Here, one second, it's popping up. That's just the general assessment authority against th that any uh, city, village, or town can can levy a special assessment. Okay. There's nothing about this intergovernmental agreement that changes that statutory ability that we have. Okay. And 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 while his letter says we have not refused to consider letter levying a special assessment, it doesn't say they would. And that, those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Two different entirely statements. Mm -hmm. So if I'm taking them as a word, it means you haven't refused it, but that doesn't mean you say you will. So disregarding the rest of the, the letter. Yep. So your point last time was, uh, are we going too far with in discussion without having a motion there to discuss? There really isn't a motion, I think, to no. put on that. Is there anything to even do? Well, anyways, um, your, your point last time was that you wouldn't want to pay because there were houses that aren't ours that we can't assess. assess. Um, would this if we were to get some sort of guarantee that they would assess, would that alleviate those fears for you? No, because quite frankly, the village of Cambridge cannot afford the costs related to annexing those roads at this time. Okay. They do also mention the bringing it up to the village standards. Um, is that something that we are required to do for our ordinances? I know if, we've talked about this before, but... If we were to reconstruct it. Right. Uh, yes, but not if we are just maintaining it under the intergovernmental agreement. And the same thing they mentioned, Billstead Road. We haven't reconstructed Billstead Road. If that road needs to be reconstructed, would we be looking at bringing it up to village standards? Yes. Yes, at this point, it hasn't been reconstructed. 
we've also talked about the discussion that was the intent of the intergovernmental agreement that the village would be annexing homes and um, the streets. One, the intergovernmental agreement goes on numerous times to say annexations will not be forced. Was it assumed that homeowners would want to annex in? Possibly. But as we've discussed, an intergovernmental agreement can't dictate what's going to happen in the future that, and you can clarify that a little bit, but. Yeah, the statute yeah. sets the process. The intergovernmental yeah. agreement can't set the process. And there's also the, the sewer, sewer lateral, excuse me, sewer lateral on Blue Jay Way has to be re replaced at some point. So, I mean, we can we can pave over it right now, but at some point, we're going to have to tear the road up again to put this, a new sewer lateral in. And so at which point, I think we really need to bring it up to village standards at that but point. But we don't at know that when that's going to happen. Yeah. So that's... Let's, not, oh, let's, not, let's yeah. not do a crystal ball and look in the future right now. Well, well, 10 years ago, we were supposed to replace that lateral, so. Um, at the joint meeting, it was to create a subcommittee to look at one short-term goals of taking care of Blue Jay Way, and then after that, looking at long-term goals. And the short-term goal was to split the cost. I get the feeling that I, we should do something, and it's probably just filing back a you know, a letter. Uh, I don't know if we have to send it to the paper like they are trying to do. Um, and we just reiterate what we're saying, which is we, we thought we had an agreement and we weren't talking about doing any of this annexing and, um, you know, leaving that alone, get through the first part of it. Um, and, and, and that's where we're at. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. I think they know where we're at. They, we, you wanted to offer another meeting, and they said, no, we, we won't meet with you. Right. Do we have Do to? Do we meet have to? They've already said, no, they won't meet with us. So. Um, so. <laughs> well. I think maybe what you could do is just send yeah. them a letter that says, uh, let me know when you've contacted the, 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 um, uh, contractor. Contractor that, you know, to the, fix the, to, yeah fix the road and our yeah. half has been already approved by the village board and I'll be happy to write a check. Send them a bill when it's all done. Well, they've got to do it. Yeah, we oh. can't do it. Oh, I'm sorry. Road. That's right. Yeah. And they, they have one taxpayer in that road. Is that yeah. correct? Two. Two. Oh, huh. Yeah. All right. Can you, can you come up with that then, Lisa? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I feel like we should send them something and... Um, our money's waiting for you to spend it. That's what we should send them. You've got money, it's waiting for you to spend. I think that's just the reason why people are just suspicious of our government. But uh, I get it, so there's not a lot else we can do. We're just going back and forth like we've yeah, done for the last 20 years. I, I'll, I'll just be quiet. Okay. Um, <laughs> Smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Moving on to item D, the fire commission update, uh, fire and EMS. Uh, we are in the process of uh, working on budgets. Um, we have a budget uh, from the fire department. We have a budget from the EMS with the exception of one big expense. And we're trying to get the insurance nailed down. So we expect that we will have something here by the end of the week. We can, we, we're, we'll figure it out. We just don't have it yet. The insurance companies are not giving us what we needed to uh, to have for a definitive. So the budget is being worked on. Um, going to move on. Uh, correspondence. I don't see anything, so we'll pass on that. Um, li uh, upcoming meetings: September 14th, Library Board; September 20th, Water and Sewer; and September 27th, Village Board. Um, these are upcoming meetings. And uh, questions, referrals to staff, future agenda items. Um, anybody have anything here? I did have a question that I forgot to ask Todd. Um, the garage that was going to be built down by the, the mulch piles and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, have you made any progress with, with that prog project of building that garage down there? Removing. That, that will be later in the season. Okay. It'll be more towards like January. 
Oh, okay. So, December, January, give or take. Okay. He said that they're running behind, so. I just hadn't seen progress, so I thought I'd ask him. Sorry. Well, I cleaned it out, though. Yes, you did. It looks very nice down there. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. I have an item. Um, the library is going to meet tomorrow, and I know we're going to talk about another trustee here. But um, I was thinking maybe just going, because I don't know where they're at in their budget process, uh, just going to the library meeting. Oh. I, but if, if somebody else wants to go, they can go. Does anybody else care? I'll to? go. I'll go. Oh. If it, then I would suggest that we have Ted go to the library meeting, because I think they're in the process of starting their budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't know where we're going to be at with the new trustee. So I make a motion that uh, Ted Thank be you. our yeah. library representative. No, you can't make a motion. Not it's not on point. the agenda, but he can go on behalf of the village. He would what time be does that a meet? 6.30 something? Yeah, you can go, Ted. You just wouldn't be able to vote, but then at least you'd be able yep. to know, bring it I'm back to us. Them. Bring it back to the village and maybe give yep. them the village take on some things. As sure. Well. That's Good. fine. Anything else for uh, future agenda items? Okay, uh, we'll, we'll move on. Um, uh, item 14, uh, convenient to.